In this video, we are going to talk about summation notation or sigma notation. So, nung mga bata pa tayo, nasanay tayo gamitin itong addition symbol, the plus sign, to denote addition, the operation of addition. So, pag pinag-add ka ng mga numbers, maglalagay ka ng ganyan sa pagitan nila. Then, this could keep on going. Depende sa kung ilan ang gusto mong add. Pero, meron pang isang convenient na paraan para i-express mo ang addition. And that is by the use of summation notation or sigma notation. Bakit siya sigma notation? Kasi ginagamit niya yung Greek letter capital sigma. Ito ang itsura nun. Malamang nakita mo na to dati. To express addition. Paano yun? Well, madalas may kita mo siya in this form. Yan. So, we have the Greek, le Greek letter, capital sigma. Kaya siya sigma notation. And then, you have the terms that you will be adding. This expression, A sub K, represents the terms to be added. K is your index of summation. And then, itong kung ano man yung value ni k, dito sa baba, yun yung ayong lower limit. And then, yung nasa taas naman, yung n, is your upper limit. Yung mga symbols, letters na ginamit, nagva-vary, depende sa kung anong textbook ang gamit mo. Pero, para mas familiar tayo at for the sake of communication in this video, gagamitin natin si K as the index. So, paano nga ba tayo mag add using the summation notation or sigma notation? Let's evaluate each sum. So, so number one, we are asked to find the summation of, ganito siya basahin, summation of 5K from 1 to 4. Again, summation of 5k from 1 to 4. Because again, yung number sa baba is your lower limit. Then, yung number sa taas is your upper limit. Bakit nga ba may a lower and upper limit? Kasi, kapag in-express ko siya, para makita yung bawat term, ganito ang gagawin ko. So, summation of 5k from 1 to 4. Represent natin bawat terms. So, the first term will start in k equals 1. So, instead of writing k, lagay mo yung 1. That is your first term. 5k. 5k. First term siya kasi yun yung lower limit. 1. Of course, hindi pa laging 1 yan. Pwedeng ibang number yan. The next term, ano ba yung sunod sa 1? Papunta tayo ng 4. Ano yung sunod sa 1? That will be 2. So, that will be 5 times 2. 5k. 5k. This time, k is equal to 2. Next term is 5 times 3. Hanggang sa maabot natin yung ating upper limit, which is 4. k equals 4. Simplify natin yan. So, we have 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. And 5 times 4 is 20. Simplifying further, we have... 5 times 5 plus 10 is 15 plus 15 is 30 plus 20 is 50 so nahanap na natin yung sum nitong expression na to summation of 5k from 1 to 4 tingin tayo ng isa pang example next we are asked to find the summation of negative 1 raised to k plus 1 from 1 to 5 same thing Sulat natin bawat term. Pero yung k, papalitan natin nung values nung index. Mula sa 1 daw, papunta sa 5. Ibig sabihin, so we now have negative 1 raised to k. Simula tayo sa first term, 
plus 1. Add natin yung sumunod na term. We still have negative 1. Instead of 1, 2 na tayo kasi nasa second term na tayo. Added by negative 1 raised to 3 plus 1. Added by negative 1 raised to 4 plus 1. Added by negative 1 raised to 5 plus 1. And then we will stop here because yun yung upper limit natin. Pag nagamit mo na yung upper limit as the value of k, stop ka na doon. Simplify natin. So now we have negative 1 raised to 1 plus 1 is 2. Dito naman, we have negative 1 raised to 2 plus 1, that will be 3. Next term, we have negative 1 raised to 3 plus 1, which is 4. Next, we have negative 1 raised to 4 plus 1, which is 5. And then, finally, we have negative 1 raised to 5 plus 1, which is 6. Now, tingnan natin that this is negative 1. Yun yung base natin. Negative 1 multiplied to itself by how many times yun yung, yun yung sinasabi sa atin ng exponent natin so sa first term natin we have negative 1 squared ibig sabihin that is negative 1 times negative 1 a negative number multiplied by a negative number will be a positive product so negative 1 squared is simply 1 dito naman meron kang negative 1 the whole thing raised to 3 Actually, meron tayong rule na dapat sundin dito. Kapag nag ka ng isang negative number, kung anumang exponent, palaging positive ang product kung even ang iyong exponent. So, in this example's case, magiging positive lang yung product natin dito sa first term, third term, at last term. Dahil dun lang even ang ating exponent. So, lagay ko na agad na 1 yan. This is Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. This is negative 1 times 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 negative 1. Lahat yun, positive ang magiging sagot. Dahil even yung exponent. Habang sa mga odd naman na exponents, mariritain yung negative number. Which means, sa pangalawang term natin, negative. Sa pangatlong term din, negative. And then, Simplify na natin sa final answer. 1 added by its additive inverse. Ibig sabihin, same number pero magkaiba ng sign. Magiging 0 yon agad-agad. Makancel niya yung sarili niya. Dito rin, meron tayong negative 1 added by its additive inverse. Again, magiging 0 yon. Which means, yung summation nitong negative 1 raised to k plus 1 from 1 to 5 is simply positive 1. As simple as that. Now it's your turn. Can you evaluate the sum of this expression? Let me know in the comment section kung anong nakuha mong sagot. Kung merong part ng video na daw na hindi mo gaanong naunawaan, nakisabi rin sa akin sa comment section. And see you in the next video.